The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf is torn between the franchise's future and its past. While it's filled with lore and character building that should please dedicated fans, the split focus keeps the animated film from feeling like a story that can really stand on its own. But what is the worth of your word, Vesemir? See, I'm a monster hunter. Every deal has a price. Nightmare of the Wolf follows Geralt of Rivia's mentor and surrogate father, Vesemir. He's voiced by Divergence Theo James, who feels like he's channeling Nathan Fillion's swaggering Hal Jordan as he exudes a carefree charm. Vesemir's path from a lowly servant to a professional monster slayer is told in flashbacks, and writer Bo DeMeo uses the same storytelling trick he helped employ as a writer on The Witcher Season 1, playing with expectations of how much time has passed between scenes based on how slowly Witchers age. The technique is used cleverly here, but DeMeo and director Kwang Il Han are a little too fond of misdirection in a story that tries to deliver plenty of twists, but winds up being pretty predictable. Like many prequels, Nightmare of the Wolf suffers from a feeling of inevitability. It also tries to stuff in too many nods to characters and conflicts that will be important later. Some plots, like a scathing indictment of the genocidal war against the elves and other elder races, still at least add to the narrative of this film. The name dropping of major characters appearing in The Witcher Season 2, however, adds little beyond a shallow attempt at hype building. Where Nightmare of the Wolf does shine is the animation, which allows for storytelling that would be impractical even with the live action show's impressive budget. There are some excellent fight sequences that really capture the sword and sorcery roots of the franchise. Some are riffs on things previously done in the series, like a dizzying fight with portals, but others feel like genuinely novel ways to mix spells, alchemy, and weapons that seem like they come from a deep place of affection for and knowledge of the source material. Still, the more is more approach to action doesn't always work, as the climax turns the affair into a chaotic spectacle that doesn't really fit within The Witcher's grittier tone. That doesn't mean it doesn't have an emotional impact. Kaer Morin is gorgeous in its full glory, but it's also a place of nightmares. The sequence showing Vesemir and his fellow recruits undergoing the Trial of the Grasses, the alchemical process that gives the witchers who survive their superhuman abilities, is the film's most visceral. That's saying something, since it also includes a spider-like monster crawling out of a woman and the gory dismemberment of multiple children. Nightmare of the Wolf provides new lore involving the fate of Kaer Morhan and the origins of monsters, which is sure to intrigue hardcore fans. Might have slightly underestimated you. Slightly. Oh. DeMeo plays with the series' other dominant themes to varying effect. There's a surprisingly sweet romance that peeks out from all the bloodshed, and the concept of destiny is also played with, as various characters question how much agency they've had in their lives. There's even a funny jab at the concept of the Law of Surprise, a crucial key to the plot of The Witcher. But the jokes and charm are too often weighed down by the movie's attempts to hammer home core messages, with characters repeating lines like, A Witcher never hesitates, scene after scene. Friend of yours. Friend of a friend. The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf isn't a bad film, but it fundamentally lacks an identity of its own. It's a fine way to spend 80 minutes if you want to pick up some fresh lore and get to meet a very different Vesemir than the one we're likely to see in Season 2, but it probably won't get anyone new to the franchise to stick around, or even convince anyone who was lukewarm on the live-action series to get more invested in the world. For more, check out our reviews of Free Guy and The Suicide Squad, and for everything else in the world of movies, stick with IGN. True diabolical creatures fit only for killing. There is no place amidst honest men for them.